Welcome back to American Snippets. I'm your co-founder, Barb Allen. You know, uh, those of us who follow us on American Snippets know that we talk about two core areas that often overlap. One are our core values, and the next are those actions that correspond with those values. Our core values here at American Snippets are positivity, possibility, and patriotism. And we believe that following those up by living, defending, and promoting the American dream are all it takes for any one of us to achieve our own goals and to help other people do the same. A lot of our guests fit one area or both areas, and some of them, like today's, nail both areas right square in the face, and we love it. He adds his own little dose of one of my favorite ingredients, too, which is a hefty dose of snarkiness to make it super fun over there where he is COO at Grunt Style. Tim Jensen is a Marine Corps veteran. He's a patriot, and now he is also a leader in that company, Grunt Style. You may remember we interviewed Dan Alaric a while ago, and I got to meet him when we both spoke at TEDx uh, recently. So we are extra excited to have Tim Jensen here with us today. Thank you so much for bearing with us for our technical issues and uh, sitting there with a smile on your face, whether you mean it or not. Oh, no worries. No worries. Thank you for having me on, Barb. This is absolutely uh, incredible and I'm uh, really excited about this. Uh, so you'll have to excuse me. I have a nine month old son in the background and he's uh, going through some teething right now. So it's been an interesting time Perfect. at Jensen House. Yeah, I did that uh, four times. So oh. I, I feel your pain. <laughs> teething. Um, so we were watching you all last night on your porch side drinking session there with Dan Aller. And we took turns. Uh, Dave had a drink with you. I had a drink with Dan and we tapped out like pretty quick. You guys are hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, when you like your own stuff, it's very easy to drink. <laughs> and uh, I got to say America bourbon is uh, that fine of, a, of a, a good Kentucky bourbon. And it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and that is just one of the things that you all do at Grunt Style, which is a building community. We'll talk, circle back real quick for any Anybody who wasn't um, cool enough to catch our first episode there with Danielle Eric, or maybe hasn't yet heard of Grunt Style, which I imagine will be changing soon. But let's touch real quick on Grunt Style and uh, and what it is and the community that it it upholds. Sure, absolutely. So uh, Grunt Style started out as you know just an idea, a vision, right? Like all businesses, truly, right? Um, but you know, Daniel had a vision and he wanted to take what he had learned in the military and it's pride and self, pride military, pride and country, all the things that, you know, that were really in, ingrained to young men and women, uh, going through the that military lifestyle. And what better way of doing that was, you know, when you get out of the military, uh, create a shirt that, you know, resembles your pride. And, you know, that's how growth style really started. And, and, um, you know, it's a fabulous story and Dan tells it much better than I do. He's, he's quite the orator and storyteller, but <laughs> you know, uh, in the, in the years that we've been around since 2009, we've really grown into this powerhouse of a company. Uh, we have millions and millions of our, uh, units of our product out in circulation with, uh, throughout the world. Really, we do uh, business in you know, um, all the allied countries across the planet and, you know, not just the United States alone, which is absolutely fantastic. And we absolutely love um, you know, just how receptive everybody has been to the brand over the last couple of years. And, you know, we've, we've went from, um, you know, five years ago, having five of us to now well over 500. Uh, and it just goes to show how fast this brand is really being accepted by everybody and, you know, yeah. how many people were being able to put to work. Yeah. And so you said a couple of things there I'm going to touch on. Um, five years ago, you were the fifth employee to come on at Grunt Style, right. but you weren't hired first. This story I love. I love that he didn't hire you first. You went into interview with Dan and he was like, thanks, but no. Right. No thanks. And yeah, then yeah. <laughs> he, he called you back and he's like, on second thought, you know, like, you, would you come back? And you said you could have just told him whatever you wanted to tell him. Like you could have been all pissed off and told him to go scratch or, you know, right. whatever it is you want to say, which I say often. Um, but you didn't. <laughs> You know, yeah, and I, I think it was a test, you know, uh, I think back yeah. out about it a, a lot, you know, and um, I think that the, what he provided was that job, hey, if you really want that, you really want to be part of this team, come in and, and have the lowest job on the, on the totem pole, come in and be the guy that sweeps the floors, right? And, um, you know, I, I think about it all the time. And I'm really excited that I, I had that opportunity. And I said, yes, because I did start at the very bottom, there was a job that was lower in that company than what I was yeah. doing. And I went from the uh, bottom all the way to the top um, over you know five years, and it's just been absolutely incredible. That is pretty. Much. So, what do you think it does for you to have started at that? I mean, I think that is 
an invaluable experience and mindset to have and carry with you as you rise through the ranks, um, that you, you never lose sight of what it is, you know, you know what it is that almost everybody does there because you've done it. Right. And that's, and that's it. Right. So, you know, when I started out at the bottom, I started folding shirts and then I went to be the press operator, lead press operator, production manager, operations manager, chief operating officer, partner. And I've been uh, you know, really involved in building every part of that uh, business, right. Uh, from, you know, that very bottom process all the way to the top. And then I would go back and I would go and, and look at everything we did and I'd reevaluate everything and say, okay, we're weak here. We need to improve here. Um, you know, going and training other vigils, how to, um, you know, really do their job more efficiently and going after big opportunities and saying, Hey, you know what, there's an opportunity in front of us, but we're not necessarily suited, uh, to accomplish this right now because we're a little weak in this area. And then, you know, we go after and we take it and, you know, uh, really put a lot of effort into building it out and identifying those weaknesses, but you can't do that unless you know your business, right? And if you yeah. don't know how to identify those weaknesses, you know, you could just sail right through them. And the next thing you know, you've broken your company because, um, you know, you weren't, you weren't quick enough to identify those things. So I think it's absolutely important, you know, and, and having that perspective where it's been able to really look at it from the bottom. Now I'm looking at it from the top and looking down uh, and seeing the, this empire that Dan and myself and Mike Burt, the CMO, have, have really built over um, you know, the last five years. And it's just, it, it, it amazes me because, you know, it wasn't long ago yeah. that, uh, you know, I was a comic book artist and before that I was a, a union carpenter right and I was good at all those things as well but it's nothing to like what I do now to where it's creativity it's leading it's developing and mentoring um, those are all just things that you know I, I'm absolutely grateful and I tell Daniel every day that you know the one thing I, I enjoyed about being in the Marine Corps the most was being a leader and now I feel like yeah. I'm in that position again and, and uh, if I didn't say yes to that job five years ago I would never be here yeah. And so, I mean, sometimes it can look like a slap in the face or a snub, but it's really this enormous opportunity mm -hmm. in disguise. And I think that is something that is worth repeating. I had to learn that the hard way. And I know a lot of other people do when you invest all some, you invest, you say to yourself, everything's going to be awesome. If this one meeting goes exactly the way I think it's supposed to go. Right. And then right. you go, you have that meeting, you have that event and it doesn't go the way you want, but something that seems insignificant comes out of it. And I know I can think of times in the past where I've been like, oh shit, man. I mean, like I was supposed to go there when that door was open, but I took it as a snub and I lost an opportunity. Right. Um, and so only when I learned to recognize those things have started changing for us to, it's part of what helped things start changing for us. Yeah. When you recognize that those little things are actually opportunities and you just got to kind of get out of your own way and in your own head and not be so focused on a particular outcome, determining your Absolutely. path or your, Absolutely. you know, it, it takes, it takes a lot to really yeah. do that. Right. Because, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, ego, there's a lot of self, you know, self, you know, it, it goes back into uh, a lot of things like uh, self-actualization, right? If we yeah. talk about uh, industrial psychology, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and so, so on and so forth, it takes that, that person to really look at those things when you're at the top and say, you know what? I, you know, I, I know I have personal pride, but I see I, I cannot let my pride stand in, in front of opportunity, right? And I know when there's an opportunity knocking, and I, I may not see it all the time, but, yeah. you know, generally when it knocks hard enough, you got to be like, Hmm. Let's evaluate. Let's look at it. Okay. This makes uh, the right decision for me, or this, this makes sense for me. And I can understand, uh, the, the level of work that I need to get put into this and to where I can actually be at the end of the day. So, uh, I don't know if that made sense. It kind of went off. That little no, bit. it does. It does. And it's, it's, I love having these conversations with people who've gone through that. It's a, it's a core concept of, of what we, teach ourselves. Uh, so how did you go about rising through the rank? Was it like when somebody else got hired, you got bumped up a notch or was it like creating? Cause now you have some almost 200 employees, right? Or more? 500. Yeah. Yeah. 500. Oh yes. So, ridiculous. Yeah. I meant to uh, say 500. <laughs> oh no, no problem. Uh, sometimes I still find it absolutely amazing myself. I'm like, ah, oh, 500 people. But, that's, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to answer that question, you know, it was, again, it's, it's, it was me seeing those opportunities in front of me, right? Where I saw, Hey, Dan, 
you know, and that was, you know, I went from pulling shirts and I would work, you know, eight hours. I worked my eight hours a day, clock out, and then put another four hours of work in on my own time, not getting paid for it because I saw that there was wow. an opportunity, right? And those things just needed to be done. And I knew the company wasn't in a position that could afford the overtime. So I'm like, at that size, I'm like, you know what, this needs to be done. If I don't do it now, I'm just going to walk into this tomorrow, right? And, and and playing it all in my head. So it's like, hmm, I got nothing to do. I see what's going on here. I like what I like my job, right? So I just gave more effort, and I didn't need yeah. to be compensated for it, right? Because I felt like I was doing something that was of self worth to me, and I did that, you know, pretty much through all of these, um, you know, positions that I I walked myself into. I don't think I ever. I was ever given anything in this company. Uh, I, I certainly had to work for everything I, I accomplished. Um, but sure. how I did that was just looking at opportunities and, and saying, again, you know what? My pride, I have pride in myself, but I also know what I'm a part of here. And there's going to be times that, you know what? It, it makes sense not to, you know, uh, to clock out and, and, and still put in the work that needs to be done. Now, is that legal? I mean, you, you can get into all those those ramifications oh, from a state perspective, yeah. right? And you're like, oh, well, yeah, you yeah. Know. but uh, you know, that's 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 what I did, and you know, and I think that was really identified, and, and Dan really saw uh, what what I was contributing to the team, how it was working with other people, and um, you know, identifying problems and solving problems as a team, and you know, you just, I just. Hey Dan, uh, I need this to get done. Well, there's an operations position, and I don't have a guy in operations. Like, I'll take it. <laughs> not even that. You know, uh, a lot of the things I walked into, I probably had no right doing it, <laughs> but I I was willing to to try it and go after it and and fail a lot uh, during the way. But yeah, uh, I learned from it, and you know, I made myself better and educated myself along the way. Nice. So, do you do, uh, do you ever have like? CEOs of other companies come to you. Has that happened yet where they look to kind of emulate your success? Because I know a lot of people in the corporate world or businesses in the corporate world, people, just people who work in the corporate world and freaking hate their lives and hate right. their jobs, you know, and just look to like get the hell out at the end of the day. You know, they're, they're already mentally clocking out when by the time they even made half their two hour commute or whatever. So, um, you know, that you all have managed to create that space in a wildly successful company is really, really a valuable skill set that you have. I mean, let alone your products and your community and what you do and all that. It's how you created that environment where people can't wait to show up to work. And I know probably people get pissy and have bad days and all that crap, but not to the degree that, that, you know, it happens. And for the most part, everybody feels like part of a team and a family and that you all work together for this cause that you get behind. So have you consulted other companies or have you been asked to do so? Or would you do so if you were asked? Uh, so the great question, right? And I don't get asked this one pretty often. So this is just rather refreshing. Um, <laughs> so the, 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 the question, the, the answer is how do we do it? I have to answer that before I say, how can I yep. help others, right? Sure. So how we've been able to do it was we we really focus on culture, right? The culture is just as much as the product that we sell than it is anything else, right? If if we don't have an internal culture of, of pride and self, pride and military and pride country, and we don't live to that meritocracy and that ability to say, I'm going to walk into work every day and crush it. And I have the best people to my left and right, just like I was back in the military. That yeah. We can be given a you know, an order and we can, you know, uh, execute and accomplish the mission at the end of the day. Right. So we've built a, a, an incredible culture around that to where, you know, people walk in from military service and quickly identify that we have a rank structure. Oh, okay. I understand that. I know how to communicate with other people right. on a level of leadership. Um, you know, we have the buddy system that works in a lot of our, uh, direct labor side to where, um, a, a lot of guys who are struggling from combat, um, um, you know, uh, injuries, um, have a, a support network at work, right. And they're able to have conversations with people at work that they don't normally have with people outside of their circle of trust. Right. Um, so, you know, we've just been able to, again, just keep stacking and stacking and stacking that culture. And it's, that is probably why we have the company that we have. When we have the product that we have is because we have those people that absolutely 100% believe in what we're doing, 
right? And and, they, yeah. and it emulates in their in their ability to come to work every day and be successful. So um, do we get contacted a lot for this on how to help other people with that? Absolutely. You know, uh, I think a lot of people are enamored by our ability to get this done, right? Because you know, at the end of the day, I have a degree. I have a bachelor's degree in creating video games, right? Daniel uh, has no professional or um, higher education. You know, you had the army and went out and started a couple businesses. Um, uh, Mike, our CMO, has no uh, marketing background. He has a, a master's degree in HR. So are we, the three of us, qualified to do what we do from a business perspective? No. <laughs> but what we have is the ability to say, hey, we're a team. We understand how teams work. We know what the military has taught us, and that's to be task-oriented, mission-objective people, and how to build great teams around that to be successful. Um, and you know, if I was to go around and 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 talk about that, and I know Dan does this on on his tours and on his speaking engagements, he does a wonderful yeah. job of. Again, he's more more articulate than I am. I'm just a dumb grunt. Um, uh, <laughs> but I don't think that's the case. But, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, he. Uh, he goes and communicates this, that the culture is your business, right? And if you can't have yeah. that culture, if you can't put a finger on it, if you can't describe it, if you can't touch it, if you can't feel it, if it's not real, then you don't have a company. You have an organization that probably does something, right? Um, and, you know, I'm a part of a lot of uh, different executive groups as well as uh, uh, Mike and Dan. And, you know, I, it's amazing to me that, you know, being you know a 39 year old dude that has never ran a business before, sitting in, in the powerhouses of, of of business leaders, in you know um, the group I was with is downtown Chicago, and you're talking businesses that are hundred million dollar plus, you know half a billion dollar com companies. I'm sitting at the table with these guys like, well, they're all looking at me saying, how the hell we did it? And I'm like, <laughs> well, you guys make far more, and they're like, no, what you've been able to do? And I'm like, so that's that's fascinating, right? And uh, yes. that's, that's the, that's the exciting part, uh, uh, that I take a lot of, uh, enjoyment from when I'm, I'm sitting around other business leaders, cause they all look at us like we're an, an enigma and we are. Uh, but again, I think that that's where a lot of the military class, uh, we need to think different. And this is something I've always said is, you know, when, when you're an infantryman, you're getting out of the military, you don't have to go just be a police officer. You don't have to go be a security mm -hmm. guard or this, that, and the other, like they tell you, hey, these are the skill sets that you learn. No, you have been taught to be a task-oriented mission planner that knows how to build teams and accomplish objectives, right? If you take those things and go out and, and build yourself an incredible team and, and really put yourself around success, other successful people that want to help accomplish a vision, that right there is it's money. Yeah. It's money, right? It's it, it it is everything that uh, it's core teamwork. Yeah. So now at Grunt Style, we'll talk quickly because you have a lot of different areas. You do America Bourbon, and you have apparel and gear, and then there's also also Alpha Outpost, and you run mm -hmm. events that you do. So it's a lot of things to to touch on. I know we can't go in depth on all of those, but um, pick one. Pick one of your faves. Let's start with uh, the bourbon, the events, see. the. Oh, uh, well, the bourbon is probably one of my favorites, but we just started this one, <laughs> and uh, I think this one's really exciting. It's called G3 Dynamics, and what G3 Dynamics is, uh, it's really the answer to competition entertainment, right? So we know that there's uh, a huge array of gun owners in this country, right? 30 million, actually, uh, are involved in competitive target shooting, right? Yeah. If you can imagine, there are about 15,000 people that go to Vegas to watch a bowling tournament, right? Which is probably more boring than golf. Oh, God. I <laughs> right? don't know. I don't know. It depends on which one <laughs> serves booze and which one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> there, that is a motivator, right? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing I've always under, understand, I've done a lot of comp competitive shooting. Um, you know, we've taken um, my shooting partner and I have taken second uh, in a, a competition out west. We've taken fourth in, the, in one of the most prestigious uh, sniper competitions, which I ended up buying. Um, and the thing about it is there's never anybody that comes out and watches these things. It's just a, a bunch of guys and gals that come out and shoot a match and they're there for two, three days and then they go home. I'm like, you guys have the most, you know, incredible personalities. I'm looking around, I'm seeing all this opportunity. I'm like, 
well, why hasn't it not been a business that has started something that has put more entertainment behind this? And I'm like, oh, because we're a bunch of shooters, right? And you know, <laughs> all the shooting gun, all the in the shooting uh, companies, you know, they they just come in and you know they give money around and product around to you know just to put on the prize table and this that and the other. And I'm looking, I'm having conversations with these guys. I'm like, hey, you guys know you're only marketing to the same small group of people that are consistently coming to your matches and they're winning your product, but they're selling it on eBay. So it's not really doing anything for you. Right. And like that, that's how angry <laughs> do you guys have to be to, to say, we're not doing this anymore. Um, yeah. So, you know, the G3 dynamics really um, came, uh, came to fruition and uh, I built a great team that uh, is really answering that. Uh, we're putting on our first competition here in, um, June, first week of June, June 2nd and 3rd at Rock Castle Shooting Facility in Park City, Kentucky. It's called the Gunslinger 2 uh, Gas Gun Match. And what we've been able to do with that is, you know, we've already brought new sponsors into the arena that has never been involved in shooting competition sports, right? So Realtree, uh, we brought Realtree in as a uh, one of the larger sponsors. We got Monster involved. We got and go down this list of all these people that are involved that have never been in the shooting world and everybody out there now is saying hey what what what's what's going to sell on g3 doing um you know they're all getting nervous i'm like well you guys sat on this gold mine for a long time i'm gonna just come in and <laughs> take it all because you know i see That's the opportunity sweet. right yeah so uh we got the the gunslinger matches happening in june and then um we have purchased the mammoth sniper challenge which is the oldest longest um uh, DOD uh, sanctioned um, long range shooting competition. Um, and uh, we will be putting that on in January, which is going to be absolutely amazing. We have so much good news to talk about uh, and kind of yeah. keep people with on, on uh, where the venue's actually gonna be at, uh, the people that we're getting involved in it, the media that we're gonna have behind it. The ultimate goal is to package these things and get them prepared for TV, right? Because I think that shooting is absolutely interesting. And, if, you know, I'm that yeah. demographic. I would watch that if it was on TV. I would watch the personality that was going up there and crushing it. The Dan Horners of, of the three-gun world. That This guy's a 14-time world champion, and, and nobody seems to beat him. I, would, I know him personally, but I would love to watch this guy on TV. You know, so I think there's a lot of opportunity. And I just think that, um, you know, G3 is going to be that vehicle that, that really transcends and, and changes the whole industry. Oh, but I see. What, I'm so glad. I, yeah. uh -huh. but, that, but that's what Grunt Style, I think that yeah. answers to the bigger parts of things, right? Because that's what Grunt Style is doing. And that's what America Bourbon's doing. doing. Uh, you know, America Bourbon took third place in the World of Whiskey competition, right? And we're not, whiskey, yeah. we're not whiskey makers, <laughs> right? Well, uh, you are now. Yeah. We are, that's right. Uh, Grunt Fit <laughs> is our app. You know, our app is doing incredibly well for fitness, uh, our, yeah. all our fitness fans out there. And then... Um, Alpha Outpost, subscription-based box company. Absolutely wonderful. If you're not a, a member of this, I implore you, because if you like the outdoors, I seriously just put all the boxes of this year together on my table. I'm like, I legitimately can live outside for a week and never have to worry about sustainment of anything because I have everything I need right here. Sweet. And it's good stuff. So uh, again, so I think the, the, the Grunt Style product from everything that we do is, you know, Again, it speaks to the individual. It's built with pride, uh, and yeah. uh, it's a reflection of our, our overall culture. Yeah, and it attracts the people that are into the same things that you all are doing. You know, obviously, it's I can think of about 50 people probably in my life who would be like, uh, but they say that about pretty much everything I do, too. But, like, you know, I'm someone who would go into that community and would love it. So you're marketing to a specific type of person mm -hmm. and that's all you need because there are so many of those people out there and it's, it's a largely untapped audience and a largely untapped demographic because nobody really has gone to the lengths that you all have to reach out to people in this demographic you know right. we're right. largely overlooked or or, right. or maybe dismissed now, yeah. i'll tell you 2017 grunt style talked to 14 wrap your mind around this 14 percent of the world population 1.14 wow. billion people we talked to last year on our social media. Yeah. And that's absolutely incredible. I, I don't know of any other businesses that are able to do that. I don't even think Nike is doing that in, in their social media game. No, because it's a different demographic too, I think. Right. You know, you're just attracting the, uh, you know, the hardcore, unapologetic, good people who are maybe 
a lot of other people can sometimes misunderstand you. I know you've talked about like tattoos and language and all this stuff, but you know, everybody is a person with families and Americans and proud Americans and contributing Americans and patriotic Americans and, and um, to date largely ignored. So it's super refreshing to see you guys are swooping in and just filling that space. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you deserve all the following that, that you're getting because it's a, uh, it's just such a refreshing, unique avenue that you're going down. And I think you're just going to continue to grow. I don't see how you couldn't keep growing. So um, let me talk about, I know there were some things we, we ask everybody here at American Snippets, and I want to get these in before you run out of time, because I know you have a call. Um, we talk, we ask people a lot of the same questions. So, because it's interesting to always hear what you all have to say. If you could call up one person now and spend the afternoon with them, any one person that you haven't met, and just hang out with that person for the afternoon, who would it be? That I have not met. You have not met. And as be alive. Everybody always asks, living or oh, dead? Living. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's a great question. Um, I would probably say, are you familiar with Thomas Sowell? I he, with who? Thomas Sowell. He's an economic, um, you know, uh, you know, emeritus. Uh, he's huge into uh, political science and, and economics. Okay. Uh, that is a, a secret passion of mine. Uh, <laughs> we just uh, outed you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I would love to, you know, sit down and 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 ha spend a day with him and uh, you know talk about his experiences. Um, you know. He was, uh, you know, uh, worked very closely with Milton Friedman, which was another economic, uh, you know, brilliant man of, of the early 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I love the idea of, of capitalism. I love the free market. I love those things. Uh, it's very, again, it's a dirty passion of mine that I like to just kind of, uh, you know, read like Frederick Hayek. I can go all, all these books of, of individuals I've read because it's fascinating, right? Because at the end of the day, if you think about it, the one thing, and, and this is a, probably the only time you'll ever hear me talk about this, but it's a great question. Um, but, you know, capitalism is probably the greatest institution of economics that the world his in world history that has taken more people out of poverty and moved them up uh, the, a level into um, a state that they're able to make their own decisions in a market that they can participate in. And, um, I think that's a lot of what Thomas uh, soul talks about and, you know, it's things that fascinate me and, uh, I would love to sit and have a, a, a an American a drink of American bourbon with him, and uh, maybe share a cigar <laughs> and, and just pick his brain. And uh, that would be that would be absolutely. I would love that. So why don't you reach out to him? <laughs> Is that do you ask people that that, that question too? <laughs> no, I haven't asked people that question, but I feel like if. Any anybody is going to just go ahead and reach out. I mean, how the hell I, I got you guys. I just like, boop, 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 you know, and I got you. Right. So <laughs> sure, sure. You, you know, know I, never, I never thought of it. Now, now I'm going to have to, you know, I'm yeah. Gonna, I mean, what's the worst that happens? That. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Um, and obviously we talk a, a lot about the American dream. We have a very clear idea of what that means to us. And in a very non cheesy way, I know it's often like toss about like some sort of pretty fairy tale phrase, Phrase, but there's very serious significance behind it for us and it's why we work so hard and it, it's what hanging on to that is what brought me through what I've been through um, mm -hmm. and now we're turning around to help other people get there as well so we're very curious to know what do you think the American dream is or am I allowed to curse <laughs> yes yes I do it all the time I try not to here but yeah go for it just just right. be you, man. <laughs> sure, sure. I think the American dream is to say fuck you to to to, to people, right? To, to to stand up and say, you know what? I don't like what you're saying and I don't like the way that you're doing things. I'm going to do something different because I think that I can do it better, right? And I, I think that that is essentially what has been the foundation of this country, right? Yeah. The, 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 the pilgrims came over here because they said fuck you to the British, right? And everything has happened since then. We've been given the middle finger to pretty much the world, right? And we've been doing it in the only way that is, uh, that is unique to us, and that's the American way, right? And, and we, at the end of the day, always come out better than where we were the day before. And I think that is something, you know, absolutely incredible. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's the American dream is, you know, 
not being told no, going out and, yeah. and, and going after things that you think that you can do and do better, right? Um, you know, you, you see people that, you know, say, well, the American dream is dead, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't think it's dead at all. I think that we probably have more opportunity today than we've ever had in, you know, the last hundred years of American existence. Um, and it's because we were more socially connected. We have more technology at our fingertips. We have, you know, all this opportunity in front of us that if you have an idea, all you have to do is envision it in your hand and make it work. Because yeah. what, what's going to hold you back? Well, the government, but they'll come and take your money. But, <laughs> but <laughs> really, but at the end of the day, nothing can stop you. Nothing, nothing yeah. can stop you. And um, you know, you, I don't think you could say that if you're somewhere else uh, in another country, right? You, you know, the, those conditions don't exist. Yeah. No, that is what we believe too. That's why we went all in doing what we're all doing. You know. Right. So, and then I just want to say to you quickly, um, I see that you all are working with TAPS, with Bonnie Carroll Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. So I just want to say thank you for that. I am a gold star wife. I lost my husband in Iraq in 2005. So um, that you know obviously ties a lot into what I do. But when I see other people tying it into what they do too, uh, it, makes, it does make a big difference even in our mindsets and our psyche. You know, every time we see somebody doing their own to, to just remember, especially as we go out into the world than live among communities who really just are shocked to know that we're still at war and there are people still dying every day, you know? So when we see people doing that, it, may, it means a lot to us. And, uh, and Bonnie, I know well, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, and we're going to stock up on those too. We also have a, our own shirt coming through you all, which we're super excited Fantastic. to get out. I'm going to send it to you guys and have you guys uh, sign it for us or yeah. something like that. Love it. Um, Yes. So that's really it. I know you have uh, have things going on. We have a storm rolling in here as I speak. So I'm going to just thank you very much for bearing with us and taking the time to, to do this interview with us. We will uh, be posting it and we'll tag you in it and get it out to you um, as soon as we have it. Good to go. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. This has been an absolute pleasure and I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know what, we could do it again soon and we could talk uh, some new stuff that Gwen Style is going to be rolling out later this year. And I'd love to, I'd love to have that opportunity to do it again. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I recorded you saying that. So, you know, I'm going to be like, hey, Tim, here we go. <laughs> I know. I, I would love that. I mean, you know, as we're growing, it's fun to be able to actually offer back to. And what we're looking to do is as we grow and evolve, um, we're going to be able to contribute to people who we feature you know, to, towards their efforts and their events. So it's all going to come back around. It'll be fun for us to, to do that and be a part of, of you know, keeping people up to date on what you're all doing. So thanks. I look forward to it.